Hey, what's up, United fam? This is Pastor Arthur here, and I'm so glad you've been enjoying this teaching series, this teaching series called Power, where we have been walking through the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Well, today we are going to be diving deeper into the spiritual gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. I love this gift. This spiritual gift has uh, blessed me in ways that I cannot even express to you in the human language. And so I'm encouraged to bring this word, this teaching for you today. I pray that you're going to grow immensely in this area in your personal life. And so first, before we dive in to those six reasons or these six benefits of why we speak in tongues, I want to actually talk about the basic concept of the fact that there is actually power in the tongue. God has bestowed power in our speech, in our ability to speak and see things transform or change or manifest even. And so I want to talk about the power of the tongue, which is a basic biblical principle we see, we see all throughout church, uh, uh, church history as well as the word of God in the Old and New Testament. I want to read a few verses for us to help us understand this concept of how powerful your tongue is. Yes, your words, uh, they are powerful. Uh, Your words can start a movement. Your words can stop a movement. Your words can do extraordinary things. uh, and, And so it's important that we know and recognize the power of the tongue. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says this, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. It says those who love it will eat its fruit. That means those who use the tongue, uh, 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 that use the tongue in a way uh, that will either produce life or death. Either way, you're going to eat the fruit of death or life depending on how you use your tongue, the power in which you operate with your tongue. Another scripture tells us, it admonishes us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. It, 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 it encourages us to, to not allow corrupt talk or corrupt speech to come out of our mouth. It, it tells us, but only for such, uh, for such is good for building up uh, for, that is fit for any occasion, for the occasion, actually. It says that, that it may give grace to those who hear it, that we must not allow corrupt language and corrupt speech to come out of our mouth, but so that it may build up those who are around us, so that it may, may give grace to those who hear our speech. The Bible also says in Proverbs chapter 12, it, it, likens, the, it likens the tongue uh, of a harsh person. Uh, it says that the words of a harsh person are like a sword that thrusts and jabs at you. But it says this, the tongue of the wise, it brings healing. Man, I'm telling you, you can often bring life or death into a situation simply by the power of your tongue. You see, often we see throughout scripture and even in our lives, we often see that your proclamation, it determines your destination. That's so good. I know somebody just say amen in the comment section or praise God or yes, uh, if you feel me on that one. I wanna say that again. Often your proclamation, what you say, what you speak with your tongue, it will determine your destination. The things that you speak about in life, the things that you declare and proclaim over your life or someone else's life, it has a way of shaping your destiny. It has a way of shaping the direction that your life goes in. Let me say this. Your tongue is so powerful. It can either bring blessing or it can bring curse 
Uh, your tongue has the ability to bless someone and it has the ability to curse someone. Your tongue is so powerful that it can heal or it can destroy. Your tongue has power. Your tongue can either build up or it can tear down. I want you to understand this as we jump into this teaching on the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, that your tongue matters to God. He gave you your tongue. He gave you the power that lies within your tongue, with your words, the things that you speak. Your tongue matters to God. Therefore, the Holy Spirit as New Testament believers, New Covenant believers, the Holy Spirit wants to be involved in the use of your tongue. Isn't that an amazing concept? God is not some religious God uh, that, that he just cares about you following a bunch of rules. Or, but actually, God wants to be intimately involved in your life, even to the point of how you speak and the things that you say. God is not some faraway uh, person or some faraway thing or just a rules in a rule book. But no, God wants to intimately be involved via his Holy Spirit, even to the point of your life where he is involved in your speech. That is incredible. There is power in the tongue. I want to talk about another concept about how powerful the tongue is. Do you know that all of creation, heaven and earth, and the universe, and the, the, multi, the multiple universes, and the stars, and the, the sky, the, the sun, uh, the planets, they were formed by the mouth of God. Wow, my God. God actually spoke everything we see into existence with the power of his tongue. If God can create heaven and earth and all that we know in existence with the power of his mouth, and if we, you and I, are made in the image and likeness of God, how much more do our tongues have power to bring blessing and cursing, healing and destroy, build up and tear down. Our tongues matter to God. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God said it over and over again. Let there be, let there be. He spoke it into existence. There is power in God's tongue. And my brothers and sisters, as humans made in the image and likeness of God, there is power in our tongue. Even so, after the fall in the book of Genesis, we see in Genesis chapter 11 that man fell. He rebelled against God. He sinned against God. He was removed from the Garden of Eden. And we see humanity begin to grow in rebellion against God. Uh, and we see that they were unified because the Bible says that they all at the Tower of Babel had one common language. They all spoke one language. They didn't have multiple languages uh, all across the earth. They had one language. They were all in one place in one accord with one common language. And they were building a tower called the Tower of Babel. And the Bible says that they were going to try to reach to the heavens by building this tower. And the Bible says that God he confused their languages so that he can divide them up so that their rebellion would decline. They were unified in one place. Isn't that amazing? That if a people who spoke one common language, one common language, were all under one accord, they could do something so to where God says, no, I need to slow them down. Because if they are all in one accord speaking one language, they can begin to grow even greater in their rebellion and their sin. And so God divided them up by separating their languages and they begin to spread out and populate the earth. There is power in your tongue. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul the Apostle lists the gift of tongues and the gift of the interpretation of tongues. 
He lists those as spiritual giftings that are valid spiritual gifts for the believers. Of course, we also see Jesus when he commissions the disciples. He says those whom believe the gospel uh, will be saved and baptized. And he says that they will speak in new tongues. And so there are benefits to speaking in tongues. There's a, this is a supernatural gift. This is not some common gift where you learn, uh, you know, learn a language uh, from Rosetta Stone or take a few classes in Spanish. That's not what this is. This is a supernatural component that the Holy Spirit gives the believer uh, for those whom believe. This is a spiritual gift useful for building up God's people. And so there are six benefits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split those six benefits into two areas, two categories. I believe the first three benefits are going to be for us loving God, for you and me on in our personal relationship to love God. And then the second, uh, the, 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 the last three uh, are going to ha- deal with loving our neighbor, uh, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. So it's mirroring the first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I believe the gift of tongues has six benefits. The first three fall in the category of loving the Lord your God. And then I think the last one falls into the category of loving your neighbor. So let's tackle the first three. The first three uh, benefits uh, of speaking in tongues, it deals with, number one, speaking to God. That's the first benefit of speaking in tongues is that you're speaking to God. The second reason is that you're speaking mysteries of the kingdom. You are speaking the mysteries of the kingdom. And the number three reason why, uh, whether there's a benefit of speaking in tongues is that you are edifying and building up yourself in prayer. And so with that said, I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting at verse one. It says this, pursue love, and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Now, verse two is really keying in on the gift of tongues and speaking in tongues. So pay attention to verse two. It says this, for one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. That's the first benefit. One who speaks in tongues speaks not to men, but to God. For one who un- for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their building up and encouragement and consolation. It says this in verse four, the one who speaks in a tongue builds himself up, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. And so let's break this down here. Let's talk about these three reasons as it relates to loving God. Uh, These have to do with you. These first three benefits have to do with you and your love relationship with the Lord. So number one, the benefit of speaking in tongues, it deals with you speaking to God. What does that mean? You speaking to God in verse two, it says, for one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men, but to God. When you speak in tongues, when you pray in tongues, you are actually developing a direct connection with heaven. When you are speaking to God, you are speaking to him from from your spirit to his spirit, from Holy Spirit dwelling in your spirit to his spirit. You're speaking spirit to spirit with a living God. You are having a direct connection between you and God. It's amazing that God would give us this gift so that we can speak to him. It's not about us speaking just to men, but this gift is given to us so that we can speak directly to God. 
This is going to develop you in your prayer life. If you begin to speak in tongues, pray in tongues, worship in tongues, this is a way that you can grow in your communication and your communion and your relationship with God is having a language, the language of heaven where you're speaking directly to God. Hallelujah. The second benefit that it talks about, it says, uh, is that you speak the mysteries of the kingdom. You're speaking the mysteries of the kingdom when you speak in tongues. Why is this important? Because when you speak in tongues, you are actually speaking divine insights. You are speaking about divine secrets, heavenly uh, secrets, divine insight that your human intellect may not comprehend. It's like your spirit is bypassing your human intellect and you are declaring and speaking forth the mysteries of heaven. You are speaking about the mysteries of the kingdom. You know, when I think about this concept, I think about the fact that the scripture says it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and it's the glory of man to seek it out. There are some things that God, some mysteries in the kingdom of God that he wants you to pursue and go after uh, some revelation that God wants us to have. I also think about Jesus and him preaching and telling many parables in his day and time. He would speak in parables because he wanted to give truth that was packaged and hidden from the person who had a hard heart. You see, God's secrets, the Bible says, are for those who fear him, for those who love him. Not anybody gets to have God's heart. Not just anybody gets to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of God, but it is only those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness that will be filled. So look, again, when you speak in tongues, you are speaking the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And you should also pray for the interpretation of those mysteries. Hallelujah. But let me jump to number three. The third benefit, the Bible says this. Uh, it says this. It says uh, that you're edifying and building yourself up. Hallelujah. It says that uh, your, your spirit man is actually, in this context, your spirit man is actually being supernaturally strengthened when you speak in tongues, when you pray in tongues, when you worship in tongues, you are actually supernaturally strengthening your inner man. There is certainly, we are human beings with a flesh body. This right here. It's a flesh body. Yes, you have a flesh suit. But you also, as a believer, you have a spirit. You have a mind, will, and emotions. But you also, you have, that's your soul. You're, you have three components. You have a, a flesh suit, a body. You also have a soul, a mind, will, and emotions. But then you also have a spirit. And God wants you, in order for you to live a life that is pleasing to God, in order for you to uh, walk out the fullness of your calling and walk, uh, walk, live out a life where you're being shaped and formed into the image and likeness of God, the Lord is strengthening your spirit man so that your spirit man can be transformed and ultimately uh, uh, reach your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. And then ultimately there's a metamorphosis that even happens on the outside of you. But the Holy Spirit wants to strengthen your inner being, your spirit man. And so when you speak in tongues, you are actually edifying and strengthening your spirit man. Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, it says that the one who speaks in tongues builds up himself. Do you want to be built up in the spirit? Huh? For real? Come on. If you're watching this, I want you to just drop like a, 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 a hammer or a tool or something like that. Talking about building an emoji or something like that. If you want to be built up in the spirit, if you want to be strengthened in your inner man, or you can even drop like the, you know, the emoji with the strong arm. Yeah. If you want a strong spirit, man, I want you to just drop that emoji and let that be your prayer. Well, one of the ways you can do that is through the gift of tongues by strengthening uh, your inner man, you, you can strengthen your inner man by speaking, praying, worshiping, 
talking to God in tongues. I'm telling you, it'll transform your life. You see, I want to say this. Tongues, the gift of tongues, it's a tool for worship. It's a tool for intercession. The gift of tongues is a tool for devotion, especially, watch this, in times of oppression, in times of opposition, in times of temptation. The gift of tongues, it's a tool for you to use that you can be, you can use to, to persevere in difficult times. I want to read 1 John, John chapter 1, uh, starting at verse 18. He talks about uh, how, the, how praying in the spirit will allow you and, to, and support you in the last days of times of great temptation, great opposition. It says this. It says, in the last days, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the spirit. My goodness. Verse 20, it says this, but you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus that leads to eternal life. Listen, in the early church, in the early church, the gift of tongues, speaking in tongues was a regular part of the believer's life. If the believers needed to speak in tongues in the early church while the apostles were present with them and they were raising people from the dead, opening up blind eyes, casting out demons, if they needed the Holy Spirit 2,000 years ago with the gift of tongues, if they were speaking in tongues, using it to help them persevere through difficult times, how much more in this day and age do we need this spiritual gift to be able to persevere through difficult times? You and myself, brothers and sisters, we need this spiritual gift that God gives to us lavishly. Hallelujah. So look, I want to speak to you for a moment. Those of you who say, man, that sounds really amazing. I do want to strengthen my inner man. I do want to uh, build up my spirit. I do want to speak directly to God. I want to be able to speak the mysteries of the kingdom of God, things that my intellect doesn't even know. I want that, but Pastor Arthur, I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if God would even give me that spiritual gift. Well, listen, I want to say this to you. I want to tell you, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, if you being evil uh, as a father, being an evil person, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your perfect heavenly father know how to give good gifts to his children whom ask him? That means that our God is a good God. He's a good father. He's a loving father. And he wants you to have every good gift. God will not withhold good gifts that will benefit his children from them. But God actually wants to lavishly give his good gifts to us if we simply ask and trust and believe for them. Let me say this. I remember my experience where I was exposed to this type of teaching uh, and I began to get hungry and I began to read my Bible. And I said, man, I want to speak in tongues. I want to know what that's like. I want to experience that on a personal level. I can remember that experience where I was praying and asking God as a 17 year old. I had just gotten saved and I can remember praying for a year. Hallelujah. For a whole year asking God, God, I want the gift of tongues. I will go to church. I will see other people speak in tongues and edify themselves and sing in tongues and, 
uh, do devotional blank prayer language in tongues. And, and, and I was like, man, I want that. And I was like, I would leave uh, church service after church service, youth group meeting after youth group meeting, and God would move powerfully, but I would still leave without that gift. Until I turned 18, uh, it was my senior year in high school, and I went to visit uh, my Bible college that I would eventually attend in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it was like a preview days for college students. And so I went up there and I visited the school, and it was in an orientation meeting, or just a normal orientation meeting, uh, that they were going to be telling us more about the school. It was going to be a real a business meeting. And, uh, and I was looking forward to getting a lot of questions answered as it related to the school and the curriculum and things like that. But in the middle of this orientation for students, this older lady gets up uh, and she begins to just say, hey, let's get up. I want the band to get up there and the worship team. Let's just worship God right now. Let's just pause right now. Let's worship God. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. This is what they do at college. OK. <laughs> and so they begin worshiping and the Holy Spirit begins to move. And this this older lady, she just looks my way and she says, hey, the Lord says, forgive him. And I'm like looking around like, who is she talking to? And she's like, no, you. The Lord says, forgive him. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And, and I'm like, oh, she's talking to me. And in that moment, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I don't think I have any unforgiveness in my heart. Certainly she's not talking to me. But in that moment, I said, well, Lord, search my heart. Show me. I, I want to I have a pure heart before you. I don't want to harbor any unforgiveness. This story might be for you today. But listen. In that moment, the Lord showed me that I had unforgiveness in my heart toward my father who went to prison when I was in eighth grade. And the Lord began to highlight that and I began to stand up and I lifted my hands and I began to say, Lord, I forgive him, Lord, I forgive him. And I just began to weep and I began to declare that with my tongue. I would say, Lord, I forgive him, Lord, I forgive him. And God began to move in my heart. And it was in that moment that I released my father, one of the elders of the school, one of the professors. He came up behind me and he almost like squeezed my belly like he was giving me like the Heimlich maneuver. And it was in that moment that he squeezed my belly and I'm yelling out, out loud, Lord, I forgive him. Lord, I forgive him. Is that I felt a, a heat, a heat, a, a heat and a warm sensation begin at the bottom of my feet. And it was almost like someone was pouring like hot lava in my body and it was like a cup. And, and it started at my feet and it began to rise to my feet, to my ankles, to my knees, up to my belly. And that elder, he squeezed my stomach. And all of a sudden, spontaneously, this beautiful prayer language begins to break forth. And I begin to speak in a language that I've never spoken in before. I begin to and I begin to speak in tongues. I wasn't expecting it to happen in that moment like that at a college orientation, but it was so powerful. I felt the presence of God fill me up and flow out of me like a well of living water. It was so powerful. My mother that was there, she was accompanying me uh, at this orientation. I just stretched my hand over. I'd never done this before. And I touched the top of her head like this. And I'd laid hands on her at the top of her head. And my mother just literally hit the ground, uh, hit the floor. She fell out in the spirit. Uh, I was like, whoa, what was that? Uh, the power of God moved on her so mightily. She just hit the floor as if in the scripture where they said when they came near to Jesus and they recognized it was Jesus after he was resurrected, they fell back. Uh, as if like when uh, Moses encountered the angel of the Lord, he fell to his face. Multiple times the scriptures talks about people falling down in the presence of God or, or a messenger of God. It was like my mom fell out in the spirit. It was such a powerful experience. But what was mostly beautiful about it was I felt so clean on the inside. And this was how my experience my first time receiving the gift of tongues. And it was from that moment on, I, I, I was like, man, I've never done this before, but the Lord showed me, he's like, just keep doing it. Keep stirring up that gift that I've given you. 
in your spare time, just shurama kandala basi robo konorobasha. When you're praying to me, just sit there. Just take 10 minutes, 15 minutes and begin to robo konereba shandala la basata. When you're in worship at church and, and people are saying, lift your hands and let's worship the Lord. The Lord was like, just stay, just sit there. Instead of singing the words, sometimes just say shuramo konaraba si arabasa. And I believe that that stirring up of the gift on the inside of me has allowed me to grow in my relationship with Jesus. So let me say this. If God could do it for me, I know God can do it for you. It's not about faking it until you make it. It's not about some cultural church experience. It's not about you being a Pentecostal. It's not about you being a part of a denomination. It has nothing to do with that. God is actually bigger than all of that stuff. God is bigger than your church culture. God is bigger than your denomination. God has a spiritual gift called the gift of tongues that he wants to give to his children. And if you feel unworthy, like you don't, you, 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 you're not worthy of receiving that gift, let me just say this. That even your salvation is a gift. If you, before a holy and righteous God, can receive the gift of salvation, you qualify for the gift of tongues. You qualify for all the gifts, the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles, the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of the word of knowledge, all the gifts we've been teaching on. You are, you qualify for those, not because how good you are, but because how good God is. I just wanted to give you that. Now, let me transition us and talk about the, the, the remaining uh, uh, three reasons or benefits for why we speak in tongues. And this, these last three have to do with loving your neighbor. So the first three that I mentioned, uh, they deal with loving God, which are uh, speaking to God directly. The second one is speaking the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And the third one is actually uh, building yourself up in the spirit. Well, I want to talk about the fourth, fifth, and the sixth reason, which have to do with loving your neighbor. And so let me talk about that one. The fourth reason for uh, why we speak in tongues is to build up the church with revelation, to build up the church with revelation. And so I'm going to read verse six uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It says this, now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy of teaching? Hallelujah. It goes on to say this in verse 12. It says, so with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. So watch this. Verse 13 is really important. It says, therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret the tongue. So. How do we build up the church with revelation? Well, you build up the church with revelation by speaking in tongues, but not just speaking in tongues, but by interpreting the tongue. So that is a spiritual gift, the gift of the interpretation of tongues, knowing how to interpret the mysteries that someone speaks forth. If someone is in a church setting or a small group and we're having prayer or worship and somebody just breaks forth and begins to speak in an unknown tongue, we need to pray that someone else in the meeting would get the interpretation of the tongue or that same person would get from the Holy Spirit the interpretation of what the Holy Spirit is wanting to say in the meeting so that it can build up the church. Verse 13 again, it says, therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he or she may interpret that tongue. And so we can learn how to build up the church with the mysteries of heaven by interpreting the tongue that is spoken forth. I've been in many meetings, uh, not a whole lot, but I've been in a few meetings in my Christian walk where it was such a heavy, weighty, 
glory presence. And I'm telling you, we'd be sitting there for maybe an hour or two hours just worshiping, interceding in prayer. And someone maybe begins to speak forth in an unknown tongue. And throughout the, the meeting and it all, everything almost seemingly stops. And another person comes forth and says, I know what the Holy Spirit was wanting to say to us through that tongue. And they begin to interpret that tongue. And that tongue often would edify the body. That tongue would often yield fruit in terms of salvation. People coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is the type of power that God wants his church to operate in. It's not enough. Hear me, y'all. It is not enough in the 21st century for our churches to have bouncy houses, really cool games, great branding, graphics, great social media presence. Listen, we need above all that stuff. We need the power of God. We don't need to build churches and spiritual communities on personalities and preachers and mega whatever. We need to build our spiritual communities on the power of God. We need to see the real thing that we saw in the book of Acts in the New Testament manifest in today's time. That's what people are hungry for, y'all. They're hungry for the presence of God. So let me move on. The second reason why we speak in tongues as it relates to loving our neighbor. So we can love our neighbor in the church by building up the church, by interpreting the tongue that is given, by giving the interpretation and speaking forth divine revelation. But the second reason is this, is that we are proclaiming the gospel in an unknown tongue. We see instances in the Bible where there are believers gathered together and there are the Holy Spirit moves upon people in a dynamic way and they begin to speak in tongues, but this tongue is actually a human language that they did not know before. Let me give you an example. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, which we've preached about a lot lately. In the, day, in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, The Bible actually uh, gives this a scenario where there are 120 people gathered in an upper room like area and they're praying and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. It says that tongues of fire, flames of fire rest upon them and they begin to speak in tongues. And what happens is there are two categories of people that are watching what's going on. There's the person who's the unbeliever and there's the person who is, who's, who's not a believer in Jesus Christ, but their heart is open to God to hear the gospel. The unbelieving person looks and looks at the disciples, the 120, and they see them speaking in tongues and they say, whoa, what's wrong with these people? They're drunk. They're drunk. All of them are drunk. They're crazy. They're out of their minds. Something is wrong with them. You can go read it, Acts chapter 2. But the other group of people say, oh my goodness, they're not drunk as you suppose. It's too early in the day for them to be drunk. But I actually hear the gospel of the kingdom of God being preached in my native language. How do they know my language? They're not from my land. How how do they know the language that I speak, my, my native tongue? It's because the Holy Spirit, the gift of tongues, it's actually, a, 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 it's, it's tongues with an S. It's a, it's a diverse gift, actually. It, it not only builds you up in your spirit, it not only allows you to speak and commune with God, it not only builds up the church when you interpret the tongue, but it also has an ability to allow you, to empower you to speak in a language a human language that you did not know before. I hear all the time about missionaries going into really hard and dark 
places where the gospel is restricted, where you could actually lose your life for preaching about Jesus in countries that don't want you to preach about the Bible or Christ. And I hear about missionaries that go into these places and they get favor and they begin to speak and preach to crowds of people and they begin to speak in tongues. But what's amazing is that God will loose their tongue to where they begin to speak supernaturally the language of the land. I mean, it's incredible how the Holy Spirit can move. I want to see these types of miracle signs and wonders manifest just like in the book of Acts where those 120 believers who were speaking in tongues, they didn't know everybody's language that was present watching them. But the Holy Spirit did. And the Holy Spirit said, yes, you're going to speak in this language. You're going to speak in Greek. You're going to speak in uh, Latin. You're going to speak in, in French. You're going to speak in, 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 in the Ethiopian tongue. You're going to speak in multiple languages, the gospel to the nations so that the people may know who my son Jesus Christ is. And so again, we, when we speak in tongues, we proclaim the gospel in an unknown tongue that we did not know before. This is a powerful gift, y'all. This is not some shallow, playing the kiddie pool uh, Christianity. This is us stepping into the deep, going a little further into the kingdom of God. I'm tired of just simply preaching about Jesus died for you so you can go to heaven. No, he actually didn't die so you could just go to heaven. He died so you could bring heaven to earth. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen in the comments section. Somebody just put some hand clap emojis. Come on, just drop them. If this is blessing your spirit today, I know this might be challenging for some of you. Maybe you've never heard teaching or preaching about the gift of tongues, but I, as your pastor, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to pursue love, yet earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit. And so the third benefit for speaking in tongues is that the Bible says that, that speaking in tongues is actually a sign to the unbeliever. Hallelujah. Paul the apostle writes in 1st uh, First Corinthians chapter 14, he, 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 he reminds us of a prophecy that was given that speaks about when the gospel of the kingdom would be preached, that God would actually speak it to foreigners, but in a language that they did not know and that their hearts would be hardened toward the gospel. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting right at verse 21, it says, in the law it is written, by people of a strange tongue and by the lips of foreigners will I speak to this people. God's saying, I will speak to this people with a strange tongue. Uh, it says this, and even they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Verse 22, it says, thus tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Uh, while prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. Verse 23, if therefore the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues and outsiders come in, meaning unbelievers, non-Christians, outsiders come in or unbelievers enter, will not they say that you are out of your minds? Listen, I want to break that down for you. The Bible says that tongues is a sign for unbeliever. It's a sign. It's not a spiritual gift given to unbelievers. Tongues is not a gift for unbelievers. Tongues is a gift for believers, for Christians, those whom proclaim Jesus Christ. But it is a sign for unbelievers. What is it a sign for? Uh, uh, it's tongues, when Christians speak in tongues, what Christians are doing, they are speaking forth the mysteries of heaven. And when unbelievers come in to our gatherings or see us in prayer, praying and speaking in tongues, their hearts are hardened because they are exposed to the mysteries of heaven. Either their hearts will be, if they choose to believe, their hearts will be softened and they will receive the mysteries of heaven. They will pursue understanding and they will know Jesus Christ. If they're not, if they choose to, to be unbelievers, their hearts will actually be hardened. 
A lot of times, like we see in Acts chapter 2, when the believers begin to speak in tongues and a flames of fire were on their head on the day of Pentecost, again, there were two groups of people. It was the unbeliever who looked at the people speaking in tongues and they said, man, those people are crazy. They're out of their mind. They're drunk. But those whom would choose to believe, ultimately, ultimately, the Bible says that they would hear the gospel in their language. And so I want to encourage you to know this, that sign that tongues is a sign for unbelievers. I want you to hear that and know that God is faithful when he gives us this gift that even unbelievers can benefit from you speaking in tongues. I want to finish up the teaching today and say this, is that God is faithful and God is a faithful father and he gives good gifts to his children. And so I want to point this out, is that if you want to be a part of the family of God, if you want to know that you belong in this family, if you want to know this good father who gives good gifts, gifts of salvation, gifts of healing, gifts of deliverance, then I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Jesus, I receive your gift. I receive the fact that you love me, that you died for me on the cross, and I am forgiven. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer, I believe you are now a part of the family of God. And I want to encourage you to go ahead and text message us at the number on your screen, 404 800 7402 so that we can reach out to you. Uh, Our team will reach out to you in the next 24 hours to pray with you, get to know you. And then also the second person I want to encourage today is for those believers who actually want the gift of tongues. You want to speak in tongues. You want to know how to speak directly to God beyond what your human intellect would say. You want to be able to speak the mysteries of heaven. You want to be able to build up your spirit spirit using the tool of the gift of tongues or you also may want to I want to build up the church I want to be able to interpret tongues and build up God's church with his revelation you say I want to be assigned to the unbeliever in this unique way well listen this gift is for you so right now I want to pray that God would just manifest this gift in your spirit man that he will open up your heart so that you can receive this beautiful gift of tongues so let's pray Jesus, I pray that you would touch the minds and hearts of your people. I pray that this teaching today would encourage them, would build them up, that it would challenge them in a way that they've never been challenged before, God. I thank you, God, that you are a faithful, good father, a faithful friend who is able to give good gifts to his children. So Father, I pray if if there's anything that hinders them from receiving this gift, whether it be unforgiveness, uh, bitterness, strife, or even maybe some type of secret sin, God, I pray that they will come to a place where they will confess that sin to a friend, to a mentor, to a spiritual leader, so that their heart can be postured to receive this spiritual gift. God, you're not looking for perfect people or for perfect children to give your gifts. But God, you want to give your gifts. You call those who are unqualified and you qualify the call. So God, I thank you that this gift is a part of their spiritual inheritance in the kingdom of God. In Jesus name, I amen. Hey y'all, I love you. I want to encourage you to dig deeper into this message. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Uh, And so I love you. I encourage you to, uh, to just Pray and open up your heart to receive everything that God is saying through this message. Peace out.